author of the book, Out of the Blue. Out, out of the blue, into yeah. the red, yeah. well, into the black. Into the, into the... When's it due out? It's coming out on the day, December the 8th, <laughs> and it's currently going through a bit of a rewrite of the end. So I was told you'd <laughs> filed it. It was gone and off to the printers. Uh, I'm not going to get into the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the nitty gritty Answer details. The <laughs> uh, no, no, it, it is it, it is a work in progress, and the brilliant team at HarperCollins, I have to say, um, have been extremely accommodating. So, were you surprised? I mean, give it, when did you start it? When did you start? Uh, we started writing about? the book on the 20th of August. Right when it looked like it, she was um, going to win. Well, I just think it was a fascinating story, regardless. Um, yeah. You know, the, the fact is, she was a kind of unknown, um, and had she perhaps been more known. Uh, the seeds of this uh, <laughs> glorious forty-five day reign uh, perhaps would have been more obvious. And if you read the book, they are they are very much there. I think the author's notes, which I was looking at last night, uh, which I read about a month ago, I think, said the clues. The clues are there. I just didn't. Really, well, I, I didn't through, think all through her life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you look back to her time as a minister, uh, education in particular, the way she, you know, stop me if you've heard this one before. She came up with some pretty radical ideas. She threw them out there. Um, she didn't really roll the pitch for them. Yeah. And they got filleted by not only her own side, but the uh, but the sort of wider political uh, village. And then when it got too hot, she ditched them and rode back again. Look at that campaign. Do you remember that day in the campaign when? Uh, that press release went out saying she was going to strip eight pay. billion pounds out yeah. of public sector pay, and yeah. then all of a sudden, once it got too hot, she ditched it. There's a recurring theme there, which um, we saw on a massive scale, but one with huge implications for people's livelihoods. Were you surprised it ended this week? Yeah, I did. I was pretty. I was surprised how quickly it went. I suspect um, the moment she fired Quasi Quarting, I think she was in real, real trouble. And my understanding is that he, in their meeting, made that pretty clear. They said, you know, I am the fire guard right here. If you throw me, you are throwing yourself to the yeah. walls because there's no defence now. I'm your closest political ally and friend. And you, you throw me to the walls, they're coming for you next. And what happened on Wednesday afternoon? Because she had a pretty decent, in a, on her terms, PMQs, was solid, got, get her through to the end of the day. And then the sort of barman thing, and then... The yeah, so, vote was... so the Suella Braverman thing was all about this. There was meant to be yesterday morning a meeting of the Home Affairs uh, Committee, sub cabinet subcommittee. We're getting into the reads now here. But they were meant to sign off a vast increase in, 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 in visa numbers to allow trust to hit that 2.5% growth target that she's so keen to do it. The quickest and easiest way to do it, as Tony Blair and others found out, is to, to get growth going, is to throw the borders open yeah. and get more people into this country. It's not real, it's not GDP per head growth, but it is an increase in GDP. Um, so uh, there was a big old row about that, a proper a proper Barney. There was also the Indian trade deal uh, talks going on behind the scenes that Suella had um, had sort of weighed into and 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 upset the uh, the New Delhi government significantly. So the tensions were all there. I think that exploded. I think it was a sort of it was you know when it you know when it rains it pours. It was that. Yeah. Um, and then also there was the, the the significant issue of a complete disconnect with the whip's office. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, on and this fucking thing. And I think that that was there from day one. She was desperate to have Trey's coffee be her chief whip. She was she was yeah. the person she trusted to do it, and she kind of was doing the job yeah, while yeah. being health secretary. Um, but Trey's obviously wanted something a bit higher than that, so she brought in an untested. And dare I say, without being too rude, totally incompetent chief whip. <laughs> um, and I think that, and I think that, I think that her behaviour. I, I actually argue that the behaviour of the chief whip that night, yeah, proves that she was the wrong person for the job. Yeah, because absolutely. you cannot have your chief whip tearing through the lobby saying, "I'm resigning," yeah, yeah, yeah. and then unresign at one in the morning. <laughs> and you just think, once you got to that stage, I think, yeah, it was mad. The credibility gap is 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 gone. But I'm I'm told. She's remarkably zen about the whole thing. But, but then that even that's weird, isn't it? If you if you can, but even her speech yesterday, Andrew, was a bit weird. Liz Truss's speech was a bit weird outside the, you know, at least you know the moment when Theresa May broke down, you mm. thought well, that is a woman who's given it absolutely everything, and she's genuinely upset that it's come to this. Were you surprised by Andrew? By the way, it all panned out. I was surprised that it went wrong quite so quickly, but I think I thought Prime Minister's questions was a complete disaster for her actually because oh. there were the. It was so embarrassing. Um, you could see that the Tory MPs were embarrassed by it. They were horrified by it. The idea of sitting through another one of these week after week, I mean, just terrible. Uh, her complete inability to raise her game, to show any real um, aggression, to, to stand up for herself. I mean, completely hopeless. That's an absolutely essential bit of being <laughs> prime minister. Uh, go on then. So let's, let's look into the future. 
Who's going to be the Prime Minister this time next week, Harry? Oh, stop making me. If I knew that, Matt, I'd be the bookies rather than, uh, <laughs> <laughs> rather than here. I would say, I used to call Andrew on the, on the way in just as I was rushing here. Um, yeah, don't rule it out. I think um, <clears> the Boris a, pos- show pos- isn't, pos- isn't over yet. Look, there's, a, there's an argument to be made is does he actually want it, really? Well, I wonder. Does oh, he really yeah. want it? Does he want to go make millions you and think, squillions yes, of pounds? He, he he bloody well wants it. He's so competitive. But I mean, is it the odds of the chances of humiliation are still quite high? Yeah. Um, I don't think we'll be seeing him for a while until you know he won't be formally. He'll let this circus yeah. Um, yeah. go on for a few days yet, and I think we'll probably see some of the other candidates try and keep their powder dry for as long as possible to see what the, the situation with Boris is. But you know, we've been here before. Never underestimate that guy. <laughs>